Hello and welcome back to Fable, the lost chapters with yours truly, Lord of the and the Mad. Hi, Lord of Plosis, Harbinger of the Spiffening, Level 22, Boxes Madman, Master of Sanity, and all around a neutral guy. Let's go somewhere, shall we? Barrow Fields, to be precise. I have a business thing on my cheek to discuss. If, why is there a quest mark over there? I need to check that out as well. But there is something here that I need. A demon door. And as such, there is a lot to be done. Hello, Undead. Just do what you do. I don't care. Um, you're kind of in my way. Get out. It kind of looked like they will, he will just have let me pass. But nope, I had to kill him. I'm a cruel, cruel person. See? No one wants to fight me. No, actually they do. Oh well. I suppose that means it is in fact time to kill them all. No one minds. Besides the fact that this could really get me a lot of XP again. This also gets me some loot. I wonder if I have any of those potions that give me XP because, you know, I actually know that combat multipliers are something I need to look out for in that regard now. Let's check if we can get 24,000 experience with anything. No, but we can take this. That's cool too. There's some XP over there. Come here, you. Come here. What a cutie. Poor Lady Grey. Having you as a husband. Still, you're married, so slide yourself through. Why is she poor for that? Is that because I'm never home? Probably. The Lost Garden. Ah, the Lost Garden has this small issue of being full of... Oh, well, never mind. That did it up, itself up quite nicely. So we get Ronok, the axe. But I have a hammer. It's a big hammer. It goes swing, swing, swing and boom, boom, boom. Those are the best hammers. Next task on the list is Abandoned Road, where there is another demon door that needs my attention. But for that, I need to become an evil wizard. And I still don't look very evil though. What? Oh, you are not one of them, are you? My eyesight's not what it used to be. One was a gallant knight. His plate armor was so shiny, probably what did my eyes in. Then there was an evil mage, wore the darkest magical robes you ever saw. The last was a rogue, a bandit, bit like the chaps here. Where is the gallant knight I await? No, oh, it has reset itself. Okay, I can work with that. Ah, I recognize you, the gallant knight. Where is the evil mage I await? Right here. I recognize you, the evil mage. Where is the mischievous bandit I await? Right here. I recognize you, the mischievous bandit. My friends, welcome. Thank you. All right, let's get inside then. What is with this electricity? 
What is in the chest? The tall master's mace. Who is the tall master and why did he have a mace? It doesn't matter, I have a hammer. Alright, who is excited for a day at school? I am. I'm going to donate books here. As soon as the teacher arrives. And the others. So apparently there is also news to break in barrels, so I was unaware of this. Oh, that's the teacher. So unbelievable. It's unreal. Keep moving. You know what? Yes. Okay. Mr. Gout? Sir. What? Oh, hello. Forgive me. I'm Mr. Gout, the headmaster of the school here. Not that it's much of a school these days, the way Lady Grey keeps slashing her funding. Can you believe she sold half our library? As if mansions were more important than the education of our children. Anyway, if you could donate any suitable books you find on your travels, you'd be doing us a great favor. Wow. I'm going to donate all the books. Hmm, do you have a donation there, Hero? Yes. Oh, look! How to make friends. Just the thing to teach the children some manners. Yes. Thank you, Hero. I'm sure we can put this to good use. Today's lesson will be on how to make friends. This fine hero has just given us a good example of how to make friends by donating this book to the school. Helping people out and giving presents are both good ways to make friends. Can anybody tell me another way to make friends? Sir! Sir! Yes? Tell them you'll smash their teeth in if they won't be friends with you. No, Billy. Threatening people is not really a good way to make friends with them. I think we need to work on this some more. Oh well, let's try another one. Ah, hello again. You found any interesting reading material? Maybe. <laughs> The story of Jack of Blades should keep the little ones in line. That it should, yes. Why don't you stay and listen, hero? It's never too late to learn. Who's the red-robed warrior that brings death and destruction to all of Albion? Jack! Who's the legend in the mask with the strength of ten heroes? It's Jack! Who's the demon that stalks in the night, dragging bad children into hell? Jack? Some say that Jack of Blades has lived forever and is not of this world. But there are those who claim it is not Jack, but his mask that we should fear, and that many men have worn it over the centuries. Whatever the truth, he is not someone to be crossed. I'm gonna be a Indeed. hero like you. Wow. Apparently the first Archon is the one responsible for taking out the first Jack of Blades. As in the original, banishing him into his mask in the first place. Hey, dude, another book. Another book just for you. Hmm, do you have a donation there, hero? I. The other land looks like a charming story. Thank you, hero. I'm sure we can put this to good use. <clears throat> Twas in the latter days of the kingdom old that a boatload of travelers, wheat and rice, fleeing our land for fear of the sword, discovered an island that was true paradise. There were they welcomed by the native folk, with gifts of fruit and fowl and pig and trout, and a strange kind of ale brewed from egg yolk that the refugees drank till it knocked them out. Soon they were stirred from their peaceful slumbers 
by the splattery coughs of their gracious hosts, who had taken ill and were dying in numbers of colds their visitors had brought to their coasts. Ere long, the kindly natives were all but extinct, and as they knew not how to gather nature's bounty, the fate of the foreigners to theirs was linked. They died of starvation, though surrounded by plenty. A few local survivors did their paradise rebuild, erecting this time a great fortress in the sand. It would stop them once more getting killed, lest those ba um, bad people from Albion return to their land. Whoa! Your ace! Alright, another book. This is an interesting story, actually. Yeah. I don't know which island that is, but okay. Despite this book would be perfect. I yet to meet a child who isn't fascinated by dragons. Alright, the dragons. Why don't you stay and listen, hero? It's never too late to learn. <coughs> A long time ago, well before the age of the Old Kingdom, the skies of Albion were full of fearsome, majestic dragons. They flew wherever they wished, ate the people's livestock, rained down fire on their villages, and distressed their damsels. Then came the Kingdom of Archon. And with it, heroes who hunted the dragons for sport, almost driving them to extinction. Before long, every home in Albion had dragon scale curtains, dragon claw back scratchers, and dragon foot paperweights. The few remaining dragons fled to the northern wastes, and there they remain to this day. Though they are nowhere near as powerful now as they once were, they still represent a hero's ultimate test. So it's not about the ring after all. Oh. Any books for us today, hero? Yes. Oh, the children are always asking me about the arena. Oh, they love this. Hooray! Thank you, hero. I'm sure we can put this to good use. Uh, how many of you? Have been to the Witchwood Arena. Ah, but have you ever stopped to look at the statues in the Hall of Heroes? Some of the greatest heroes in Albion's history are celebrated there. Mighty champions who conquered the arena and the people's hearts. In the days of the Old Kingdom, heroes would lead their fans into battles so they could see their skill and bravery in combat. But all too often, spectators would find themselves torn limb from limb by balverines, or caught in the backwash of a hero's spell. And so, the arena was built in Witchwood, to give heroes a permanent stage on which to fight their duels without endangering the audience. Creatures, are brought there from all over Albion for heroes to face. And the battles get more elaborate with every year that passes. But one rule remains unchanged. Should either hero wish it, the final battle between them can be fought to the death. What was the signal? Ace! Come on! Yes! All right, so it's quite a wise idea to actually do that, what they did. I'm afraid school's closed at the moment, hero. Perhaps we could talk again later. Oh well, sure, fine. Yes. All right then, morning. That means that there will be a slight wait until the school actually opens again. But that should be much of a problem. All right. The teacher is in school. School is now in session. Or class, whatever. So let's go and uh, do things. Any books for us today, hero? Yes. Hmm. A love story. How sweet. With a title like that, I'm sure this will be suitable for the children. Surely. 
Thank you, Hero. I'm sure we can put this to good use. Was this the one with the decapitation? Yes, probably. The way of the warrior doth take its toll on a hero's face. And ere long women will fly and escape before he can give chase. Scarred and dejected, a hero named Ralph stole all of the traders' riches. He made use of their gold and bought romantic gifts for all of the uh, ladies. The women of Albion fell at his feet, and Ralph had the pick of the town, till he finally chose a pretty young girl and bought her a fine wedding gown. But too late did he see that love that is true isn't founded on wealth. His wife's only care was for money and gems he kept up on the shelf. By way of divorce, Ralph exercised his axe on her head. This he did mount up on the wall, just over the bed. So did the woman sadly become the world's first trophy wife. And Ralph did give up the matrimonial for the hero's life. Whoa. That was a good one. That was, all, that was a good one. Yeah. Oh, I have a new assistant, do I? Cool. Ooh, do you have a donation there, hero? Yes. History is an important part of our curriculum here, so the old kingdom would be invaluable. Okay. Why don't you stay and listen, hero? It's never too late to learn. I can. Can any of you tell me? Who built the ancient pillars at Lookout Point? Yes? The people in the Old Kingdom, sir. That's right. They once ruled all of Albion, and the ruins of their cities can still be found wherever you go. The kingdom was founded by a great lord named Archon, who united Albion using the power of the Sword of Eons. But over time, the sword began to corrupt him, and the kingdom fell into darkness. Strange monuments were built to focus the magical power of the kingdom, and terrifying armored figures were summoned to guard them. But at the very height of its power, the old kingdom collapsed, and Archon and his sword disappeared. What happened to them, nobody knows. Well, Arkan is rumored to be still alive. As I will elaborate upon later anyway. Hmm, do you have a donation there, hero? Yes. Ah, the final volume of the great creatures of Albion. <laughs> Should give the little ones a good scare. Why don't we start at the first one? Okay. Why don't you stay and listen, hero? It's never too late to learn. Thanks to this kind hero, today's lesson is from Volume 3 of The Creatures of Albion. If trolls ruled the land and dragons the skies, then the mighty Kraken are masters of the sea. A few men have ever seen a Kraken, and fewer still have lived to tell the tale. Since before the times of the Old Kingdom, these terrifying creatures have lurked in the seas that surround Albion. Their tentacles can grow to be over a hundred feet long and are strong enough to crush a ship like kindling. A brave sailor once drove away a kraken by hacking off one of those gargantuan tentacles. But to kill one of the beasts, oh, that would truly be a heroic task it's a good thing i did this now because you know i'm going to kill a kraken so that's some information beforehand yes the pale balverine i hope it doesn't give them nightmares we can hope thank you hero i'm sure we can put this to good use there was once a lord who thought himself good with an arrow. 
until people saw that his lies ran right through to his marrow. Many months in the cells of Bargate he spent, plotting his redemption. And once he was free, he hunted all evil without exception. One day he met his match, a foul and mighty Bulverine. He did not die from its bite, but his curse was obscene. He became one of those creatures, and pale as snow was his fur. To kill him came then a red-caped woman, a true connoisseur. A silver arrow pierced his blackened heart and sent him to his grave. And so he died in infamy without the acceptance he craved. You poor lad. Done our school such a great service. I don't know if we can ever adequately repay you. I do have a little something, and well, I know it's not much, but the children think you'll love it. We used it in our production of The Major's Apprentice, but it was a little large for our particular actors. Excellent. That's what they needed. It's head time again. All right. Do you have a donation there, Hero? Yes. A little macabre, perhaps, but uh, the tale of Maxley could teach some of our pupils a valuable lesson. Yay! Ah, it lifts one's spirits to see a hero take such a keen interest in education. Indeed it does, of course. There once lived a hob, and Maxley was his name. He was that rarest of hobs, one with a brain. Making his bed in a stream wasn't for him. He'd rather live in a village, there among men. One day he decided to travel to town. He slew a great noble and put on his gown. In Bowerstone by all was he complimented. And though short of stature, he stood proud and erected. Hmm, goodness me. But Maxley forgot what he was and grunted hello. And when the men heard his voice, all they did know. They called out for guards who lopped off his head. It stuck on a spike, dumb and ugly and dead. So when you're about to open your mouth, remember Maxley the Hob. For it's better to be thought an idiot than to be killed by a mob. Probably wise, yeah. Okay, school is over. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for some more classes. Goodbye.